Good morning. Time to resupply one of my welding tanks. The 7525 one. Let's go get the truck. Today's steel haul is I got about 10 or so pieces of flat stock. That's about it. Refilled my canister. I'm not sure what uh, gauge any of this other steel is, but... Beggars can't be choosers. Time to unload it.
still waiting. The weather, it's really been a crappy week as far as weather goes. It's in the low 30s. It's, it's been snowing pretty much nonstop. It's not really sticking, not like the plains. I guess they got like 40 inches of snow, like several feet of snow and the Dakotas, North Dakota and Montana around that area. At least that's the weather alert that I got. But it's still, it's still some on the ground here. This is a really stubborn year. Next week, it's supposed to be in the 50s from here on out, but, but I've been occupying my time still in the metal shop. I've been, right now I'm painting the last box that I made. I decided to leave it plain because I have a, a use in the back of my mind that I want to use it for and plain will, plain will be just fine for, for that use. But in the meantime, I thought I would take a few before videos of our survival homestead, <laughs> our survival gardens. We wasn't gonna use, wasn't gonna, we was gonna take the year off this year. But every time I turn the news on any station, it's like food shortages, fertilizer shortages, food prices. If you've been paying attention, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So we, we kind of feel compelled to, to, to grow our own food again to last another year. Boy, there's the, 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 the flocks and flocks of birds are out. There's just, anyway, it got distracted a little bit, so I digress. Here is, uh, I wanted to show you, this is uh, a compost pile that I have been turning for about two years now. And it's, it's straw, it's ash, it's sticks, it's, it's leaves, it's grass, it's everything mixed together and I've been, it was this big, but now it's this big because it's been heating up and shrinking down. And I was gonna use it to fill in some, some low-lying areas in this land that I cleared over here, but not anymore. And we're gonna use it to refresh in our, our garden plants when we start planting our gardens, we're gonna need it. So I'll have to make, I'm gonna keep making compost piles because I guess, I haven't looked, but, but I guess fertilizer prices are gonna go through the roof because of reasons. If, if you can get it, if you can get it. So we'll have our own fertilizer. Here's our old turkey barn and you can see that I have it protected against birds of prey and things like that. And it's not in use right now, but we're gonna get in here and including our main chicken coop and get everything cleaned up and get it ready to go. So in case we have to go back to raising animals again, just, you know, just to make ends meet or survive, then we'll be able to do that. So we don't want these things falling apart. And that's what would happen if we neglected them. So I've been putting, you know, back when it was legal, I don't know if it is anymore, but back when it was perfectly proper to do, I put several wells on the property you know, to water our, our gardens. And this is another little chicken coop that uh, we got in case of uh, chicken sickness or a, a broody hen or something like that that needs separated from the flocks. We can stick them in there temporarily. But anyway, here's a well house in a, in a well that I put in over. Here's our main, what we call the orchard garden here. It's, uh, it's filled with apple trees and plum trees and cherry bushes and choke cherry bushes. It has uh, elderberries in here. Of course, it doesn't look like anything right now, right? That's the point of the video, you know, to get the before pictures. And we grow a lot of food in here. You know, pumpkin squashes, tomatoes, and every bush that you see here is some kind of edible berry. And they're starting to, they're starting to get little buds on them. See that, little buds. That's good. And not only do they provide 
little snacks in the summertime when they come in, but Candy will pick all of them and she'll, she'll freeze them. And then over the winter months, she'll can them into uh, jams and other things that taste good that I don't know what it is, but you know, creations that she makes and puts in jars to store. And it's awesome. So here's a quick, real quick look at uh, this that we call the orchard garden. This is our main chicken house, our chicken coop. It also is not being used for the time being, though we did, we did order a flock of meat birds and I'm not so sure if they're gonna come in or not because there was a, I heard on the radio that there's a ban on chickens until May or something, but we ordered a, like 30 to 50, I'm not sure exactly how many, we're sharing it with a neighbor, a flock of meat birds to raise, and that's probably where, where we'll raise them right there. But uh, here's the yard, the chicken yard. And we, we had little areas for them to get away from the birds of prey, which <laughs> we got our share of around here. And it's kind of comical to see, back when we did have chickens, you'd see the big hawks and the eagles and the, the, the golden eagles and the other birds, you know, flying over and you'd just, well, the chickens just instinctively know to run under cover. And so that's the reason for all of this debris in the chicken yard that we no longer use, but it's ready to go if we need to. So we're gonna have to get in in the spring and get all of this back up and running. If not so much as to, to have the chickens put back in there, but just in case we have to have the chickens put back in there, we'll, we'll gather the, some, them up somewhere, some chickens up somewhere, and we'll start raising chickens again if we have to, given this, the state of affairs around the country right now. We wanna be able to take care of ourselves and our family, worst case scenario type of thing. I do have, as I'm walking by it, this, this power box kind of reminded me of it right there. The one thing that I did when we first moved here a long time ago, and I did a little bit at a time as money, you know, presented itself or, and I could, could do it, is I, I hired people to come in here and I've got three full RV hookup stations, that being one of them. When I say full hookup stations, I have two stations that have water, septic, meaning a dump station, and power, a uh, 50 amp service. And the other, I have two other uh, stations that have uh, just water and power without any dump tanks, but I guess they could use this one if worse push come to shove. And we're thinking like, you know, family or something has to come up here in the case of an emergency. Well, I, we have a small house. It's a small one bathroom house and there's not really a whole lot of places for people to stay here. But just in case emergency arises itself, we'll, we'll work something out. We have a heated tractor barn and a heated metal shop. So if we had to convert it, we'd, have, we, we'd convert it. But I hope none of that stuff has to happen. But if it does, we'll do what needs to be done. This is uh, what we call the well garden. And the reason we call it the well garden, because it has a well in it, a pump well. And we put this in here because we're preppers. And even though we have two other wells on the property, they require electricity. This does not. So it's, it's, it's water you can pump right up out of the ground. It doesn't need boiled. It doesn't need treated. You could drink it right out of the spigot here and you're good to go. It's fresh, it's clean, it's good water. And we have it. Now, grant you, we live in Minnesota where there's plenty of fresh water, lakes and streams and rivers and things like that that you could drink right out of. Also, I guess, I suppose, but you'd have to haul it back. And, you know, here we have it right in our own backyard. And that's nice. So we got apple tree, a cherry tree here. We have some other... plants 
I don't know what they are. Yeah, Candy knows. So we have this garden. We got we gotta get in we got our work cut out for us. As soon as the, the weather gets we gotta get in. We gotta start getting out here and start cleaning this up, clean up the debris, the leaves, and all the stuff that you know, you want you, if you're gonna grow food, you want take the time and go through all that stuff. You might as well do it right, you know, clean up uh the weeds out of your garden because the weeds they, they they need nutrients too you know the weeds will just suck the nutrients right out of the ground that's why you got to weed your gardens so i'm not sure if she's just going to use one garden or all four of them and i say four of them that's counting the greenhouse this year so we'll play that by ear we have used our share of uh, wood dish. It's been a cold year. Let's just face it. It's been a unseasonably cold year. This is our greenhouse. I got this on a super, super special. Not from a storm, but 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 from a. Uh, a neighbor who no longer had use for it and we we tore it down dragged it down here and built it back up again you know with some additional extra parts that we needed to do the to do the job but this in and of itself will feed us it, it just will and so I see she's been out here already she's been refreshing some of the soil and that's good. Huh. She must have been doing that while I was in there doing some welding. But anyway, it's heated if we need it to be heated. It's got the big fan louver and it's got two sheets of plastic. We got that unplugged right now. And it, it creates a barrier of insulation, air barrier insulation when it's going full tilt. So, like I said, we got our work cut out for us. This also needs to be cleaned up, but we'll, we'll get to it. I can see she's storing stuff to, to get it up and running there a little bit at a time. Things appear in here that I guess uh, I wasn't paying attention to. <laughs> this stuff just shows up. Okay, candy's ready. So let's go look at the last garden. Oh, I almost forgot. Another thing that we put in, and I always look to Jesus, I always have something to remind me. Thank you, Jesus, especially around our food supply. Although I'm pretty sure there's not much left in there now. But this is our root cellar that uh, myself and a neighbor built. And it's a 12 by 12 by 12 by 12. It's, it's just a giant cube, and it's just... Filled, you know, full of concrete and steel. It's a fortress, literally. It is quite a fortress. And you can see it's a little mound there. And the one good thing about this is we absolutely, I mean, it's an engineering marvel. And it's all by accident. I mean, we were hoping it would work out, and it did. And... We had a little pamphlet, a little three-page pamphlet that we went off of that we, we got from Amazon on how to dig a root cellar. And, you know, given our climate and the situation, anyway, to make a long story short, it works perfectly. And we didn't expect it to, but it does. It, it works perfect and has ever since we put it in. So let's have a real quick look down here. Okay. <clears throat> I had been smart enough to run power down here. And it wasn't because I thought it would flood. It was because I thought, well, that would be cool to have power down here. And turns out why it, it you know, I do have a sub pump down here. Not that it would flood, but there's been occasions where that sub pump has kicked on. So, yeah, root cellar has to be certain types of temperature and humidity, and this never freezes, ever. 
no matter the weather, I don't care if it gets 50 below zero, this will not freeze. And it keeps our root vegetables perfectly. It's worked really well for us. We'll put vegetables like beets and potatoes and carrots and things down here in September or October. And it'll stay good through the summertime if we wanted to, to keep them in here through the summertime. So even still, you can see there is potatoes down here that were growing last year. And they still look, they still look good. In fact, they, they still are good. You can tell that. We have carrots in here in this little sand. They're, they're as good as the day that they were put in here. They're crisp. They're fresh. I can feel them. Look at that. These were put in here last year. You see how perfect they still are? So, yeah. That worked out really well for us. You can see there's a little bit of standing water down here, but I do have a sub pump over there, so not to worry. More potatoes, still as good as the day they were put down here. Some more root vegetables here. I think these are some beets. Yep, these are some beets, still good, still good. I'm not sure what the heck that is. But it's still good too, look at that. Still good. Now these have been in here going on six months now. More potatoes, more carrots, turnips. So you can see, or if you can see, we have little water droplets on the ceiling in here. And that's what you want. So it's, right now it's 85% humidity and exactly 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's just right. All right. Our light bulbs burned out. Okay. Anyway, how we did this real quickly is we just, we dug the hole, we dug it down until we hit a little bit of water, and then we stopped, and we put footers in, and then we put these kind of like, these foam blocks, I forget the exact name of them, the exact name of what they are, they're, they're kind of like, but you know, them blocks that kids pay, play with, I, Legos, I guess. Anyway, you can just form, a, we formed a square, we put them on top of the foundation, and we just filled it with rebar and concrete all the way to the top. And then I hired a septic company to custom fit a concrete roof, and we sealed it up, Drilled a couple of holes for the air intakes and the, uh, the sub pump to work. We, we put in a uh, foundation support, insulated it all, put a door on, and we're good to go. It works great. That's the one thing you see every, it's a, like a daily occurrence around here. Or I, oh, I shouldn't say daily, it's like an hourly occurrence around here. Is there's no abundance of dump trucks pulling skid steers. <laughs> it's like every other vehicle that go, goes by the road down here is like a, a trailer pulling a skid steer. Since I've lived here for 20 years, it's the case. Here's like an old rabbit. Old rabbit shed, we used to keep our meat rabbits in. And we're, I guess we're getting more of those, Candy says. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get that back up and running. And here's the, the last garden that we call the greenhouse garden. And obviously the reason we call it the greenhouse garden is because it has two little greenhouses in it. And so when we're communicating to each other, hey, 
What needs harvested? Oh, the greenhouse garden or the well garden or the orchard garden, and we know what we're talking about. So we got a we got a little composter out here, a little tumbler. I don't know if it works or not. Candy does all this stuff. And I don't think she grows anything in these greenhouses. I think she actually just stores stuff in them. But this is a pretty big garden. You gotta fence everything off up here. Not so much to protect you from the squirrels and rabbits and the, the smaller varmints because they're gonna get in no matter what. So we plant enough food to feed them too. It's the deer. One deer gets in here or a couple of deer, they'll decimate your garden. So you gotta fence your gardens off up here. And she grows her pickles and cucumbers and onions and squash and all kinds of things out here. We got several apple trees out here that are look like they're doing really well. Crab apple trees, the smaller kind and the bigger kind as well. And it looks like they're thriving out here. They're starting to actually bud. So that's nice to see that. And these, she's got trellises for all her pickles and things to grow up on. And like I said, I'm not sure what trees are what. But they're all starting to, to bud out now, finally. Yeah, that's nice to see. And they all look really healthy, look like they're doing really good. That's nice to see that. These are cranberry bushes. And it looks like they are thriving as well. It looks like they're growing suckers up out of the ground there too. So they're doing really well. They've got really thick. I planted these when they were like that big, just little sticks sticking up out of the ground. Look what they've done over the last few years. Hasn't been that long. So they're, they're doing really well. They must really like it here. And you know, we get the, they get the, the cranberries. You can see that they, they, they grow a lot of cranberries. So there's some plum trees over in that corner there. She grows a lot of her spices and things like that out here. There's a little, another little compost bin. So let's move on over to our pond. That's right, we have a pond. We never used to have a pond, but we have a pond. There's only one year that it dried out since we've lived here, and that's been a long time, only one year. Now we live in, you know, Minnesota, northern Minnesota, where there's rivers, creeks, water, lakes, everywhere you look, you know, there's sloughs and draws and... So, this is, you'd think this is no big deal because right down the street, I'm surrounded. I, I, I live at a 20 minute drive from 450 different lakes, but you would be amazed at how much creatures like their privacy. They just do. They don't want to fight other people or other people, other <laughs> like-minded birds and frogs and turtles and muskrat and beaver. They find their own little puddles and this, this little pond here that we got, which I guess used to be a ditch, it's turned into a pond because over the years, this is a low-lying area. And what happened is the leaves would fall and I wouldn't pick them up over in this area here and they'd fall and grass clippings and it turned to silt and it would turn. Anyway, it ended up holding water like a natural pond would. And it attracts all kinds of frogs and turtles and uh, you should hear it at night. It's just, it just alive with wildlife. And so I really like it and I'm gonna keep it here. And that's the reason that I haven't cleaned any of it out is because it, it's kind of nice to look over and see a pair of mallards out there. As soon as the spring comes, I'll show you, you'll see it attracts so much wildlife. It, it just does. And here is our old goat barn. Now, I, I run power to it and I ran natural gas to it, although the natural gas isn't hooked up yet. Because I, what's the point unless I get it insulated, right? So I got a lot of work to do with this. Like it used to be just for our goats and we no longer have goats because we're travelers now, we're campers. <laughs> we're senior citizens, you gotta start enjoying life now so we, Anyway, I told you that story. We, we gave the goats away to a neighboring farm who's just loving on them. So, yeah, 
Now we're going to convert this. There's a little chicken coop out there. Again, just in case, you can never have too many chickens, right? So chickens eat anything. They're easy to maintain. So these are the goat toys. I'm moving those out of here. And I think Candy's going to plant some more edible shrubbery, like berries and trees and apple trees and pear trees or whatever kind of trees. It's, anyway, she, this is, it's already fenced off, so we might as well grow something constructive in it, something that you could eat, right? That produces year after year after year. So that's the plan anyway. That's the plan that we're gonna do with that. And you know, all along the property, she has these little berry bushes and things like that. Like in front of my metal shop here, she has some chokeberry bushes that the deer have just been chomping to bits. You can see the deer is eating the tops out, off of all of them. The reality is, is that's really good for the bush because it helps. They recover and they just start growing all the better, that all the thicker as the years go by. And so I planted some white pine trees here, the really big, tall kinds. When I put these in here, they were just they were no bigger than just little sticks sticking sticking up out of the ground. And I had to be so careful because you couldn't even see them when he's riding the lawnmower around here. But now the roots have developed themselves and the trees have taken hold and they're starting to grow now. And I think they'll grow really fast now that they've established a root system. And so there's a, a real quick overview of uh, what we've planned for over the years. This whole property here, the whole entire property the whole five acre property was like, let me show you. It's, I'm going over to show you and now the snow's really coming down. I can feel the cold, the cold weather coming with it. But like I said, that's very temporary. I'm expecting to be fishing in a few weeks. I hope I'll be fishing in a few weeks. But anyway, the whole property basically looked just like this. the whole entirety of the property. And my property line comes out into the woods here, about 30 yards, something like that. I have some emergency trees out here, worst case scenario I could bring down. <laughs> There's a year's worth of uh, firewood right there. So I cleared the land because as far as uh, a prepper piece of property is, co is concerned, it's, it's no good to, to have a cabin in the woods if you can't use any of the land in the cabin, right? Near the cabin, I should say. So you gotta have sunlight to grow food. You have to have a lot of sunlight to grow food. So you have to clear a certain percentage of the woods away from your gardens to get the sun in. Otherwise, what's the point? You just have to. So that, I mean, the thought of having, when we first moved here, a little cabin in the woods on five acres was nice until you realize, okay, all I can do is go for a walk in the woods and <laughs> look for mushrooms or something. Maybe uh, sit in a tree and shoot a deer or something every once in a while. But over the years, a little bit at, at a time, I, uh, I have a stump grinder for my tractor and I have the Kubota track loader and I have hired a lot of people to uh, get me started in this endeavor and we pretty much cleared I'd say 70%, 70 or 80% of the five acre property here. To suit our needs. And I'm glad given the state of uh, 
things in the country now? That we did, because even at our age, senior citizens, you know, have <laughs> free gym memberships and all. That's right. We may have to uh, rely on growing our own food. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me, we have a, a friend that has a, a little farm over in the city next door called Niswa. Niswa, I don't know how to pronounce it. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. When we first moved here, one of the things that she said kind of stuck with me. She wanted me to come over and, and till a garden for her, and which, I, you know, okay, yeah. I mean, I, I've been doing it every year since then, and that was a long time ago, and I enjoy doing it. Anyway, it's like, you know, you're retired, this and that, and why, why do you want to, you know, such a big garden space? Because I didn't understand. I was from the cities, you know. You, food came from Walmart, the super center, right? That's where it comes from. Now, she looked at me like, got to eat? Like, what, are you stupid or something? And that stuck with me. That, that kind of stayed. It, it had never dawned on me that people would grow their own food to survive, to live on. So yeah, that's what we've been doing ever since. And so, thanks for watching you guys. I guess I gotta get back to the shop and I've been painting these boxes. It's cold out and I can't open any of the garage doors or anything because the paint won't dry. I gotta turn the heater up and I'm keeping myself occupied nonetheless. So these are all the before pictures and those of you that, that, that stick with us will get to gradually see everything come to fruition. All of the wonderful trees in bloom, the garden's being put in and harvested. So talk to you later.